A stabbing spree in a New Hampshire store. Details on Nightcast. Tonight on Evening Magazine, as we say farewell to 1983, we bring you a special edition. First, our own Steve Avison takes a behind-the-scenes look at the people who put the show on for you every night. We'll also see that the best laid plans of the folks at Evening sometimes go astray as we take a look at our blooper reel. From magic tricks that didn't work to horses that just wouldn't cooperate, it's a host of blunders and flubs as we take a look at bloopers on Friday's edition of Evening Magazine. Thank goodness it's Friday, the very last Friday of the year, and welcome to Evening Magazine. I'm Barry Nolan. And I'm Sarah Edwards, and tonight we have a very special edition of Evening Magazine, now that 1983 is about over, and we're approaching another new year here on Evening. And instead of taking the usual look back at everything that's happened the past year, we thought we'd do something a little bit different this year and show you some things you haven't seen. Our own Steve Avison has been sneaking around our offices to bring you a special behind-the-scenes look at how we bring Evening Magazine into your home every night. These are the WBZ TV studios on Soldiers Field Road. This is the Evening Magazine van, and I'm Steve Avison. I do a lot of work in this van. We go on tankaways throughout New England, and we travel in this van to bring you good ideas for our instant weekend segment. But tonight, tonight we're going to go someplace different, and we're not going to use the van. Tonight, I'm going to take you behind the scenes of Evening Magazine. Let's go take a look. These are just a few of the 18 people who work on Evening Magazine. Putting in countless hours and traveling hundreds of miles each week to research and photograph stories about the people and places that make us all so proud to live in New England. It's going all the way. Come on, we're going to hit the road. And this is the Evening Magazine office. What are you guys doing? What are you doing? Putting Evening Magazine on the air five nights a week can be pretty hectic at times, but i found that most people are wildly enthusiastic about their jobs. Well, I must admit, sometimes work on this show isn't always a bit of roses, but uh, we get out there on a, a minus 20 day and Barry cracks a couple of jokes and I'm on the floor and, well, it's just a great time. Speaking of a great time, this is our boss's office. He's a pretty nice guy, but some people think he works us too hard. 820, goodbye. <laughs> we produce about 15 segments a week here, and our best ideas still come from folks at home. Okay, well that sounds like a great idea, but what I think you should do is you need to send it to Alice O'Donnell. And she's our stories researcher here at Eden. And once those ideas come in, we do a little research, set them up on our schedule board, and go out in the field and photograph the story. For six and a half years, people have invited us into their homes and taken the time to share their hopes and dreams with us. And that experience has made for some lasting friendships. It's been a real pleasure talking to you. Oh, thanks. Enjoy. Best of luck with it. Thanks. See you in Nepal, right? Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> I just got to save up my allowance money. <laughs> and while our skills and production values have changed and grown, through the years our goals remain the same. To bring these very personal glimpses to life on the television in your home. Mark. Yeah. How's our uh, race car driving friend from Maine? You're, you're going to like it. It's great. Yeah. No problems. Well, a suggestion becomes a story idea, and the story idea goes out in the field and gets shot. And once we assemble all of the story ideas and the tips ideas, we've got to make it into a show. The only way we can do that is go out in the field and put Barry and Sarah on tape. Every morning, five days a week, we go out to put that night's show down on tape. And getting there can sometimes be half the fun. But other times, it's more difficult than it looks. Oh, come on, Jill. you got to help me. Hey, Evening Magazine, where are you heading today? They were going to Natick. We're already late. Help Beautiful. Us. You don't need gas, do you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is cold. It is getting cold out here. You ready for winter, Sarah? I'm not ready for winter. But despite sometimes freezing weather, temperamental equipment, and crazy schedules, we do manage to pull the show together with a little luck and a lot of pride. 
I really don't think I would enjoy it as much as I do if it weren't for everybody. It's really like a family. And I really think it's everybody's individual creativity that makes the show what it is. It may sound corny, but it's true. To me, this show, this job, is sending postcards home to my family about neat places we got to visit and wonderful people we had the chance to know. Once we're back at the office, we put the finishing touches on our video postcard in final preparations to send it home to you at 7.30. And in the end, after 800 staff hours of work and a lot of tender, loving care, the show ends up on the air five days a week, just like this. So, that sounds like a hot idea for a cold Friday night. And don't forget, we have some great stories next week for you. Hope you join us. I right, hope you have a great weekend. Take care, everybody. Stay warm. So with all the hard work and effort of our staff, it does seem that Evening Magazine goes together without a hitch. But when we return, you'll, you'll see that things don't always go as they're planned. Stay with us. You wouldn't say that about the Celts. Well, I'm telling you, I heard him myself. Why would he say that? He never said it. He did. 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 When it comes to sports, folks in the New England area don't play games. So when they want to know the score, they turn to WBZ-TV and Bob Lobel. Hey, come here. WBZ-TV, the station New England turns to. We're for today. For daytime, the BZ way.